morning. Welcome back to the Chiron in southwestern France. Another beautiful uh, summer's day. My name is Mark and uh, I'm uh, currently renovating that little farm cottage. So the day hasn't got off to a great start. I was hoping to go out and get my uh, timber this morning to start the unit in the uh, in the house, uh, but uh, battery's flat. I've got this uh, problem with the car that I've had since I arrived in France about four or five months ago and uh, it's driving me mad. So uh, yeah, out early this morning, cut the roof rack on, all excited to go and uh, well, the car didn't want to do anything. So I think it's gonna be one of those days where I just do a few little odd jobs. I need to get a bit of momentum going with that uh, unit. Um, but it's already, it's 11 o'clock uh, and it's already nearly 30 degrees and uh, it's gonna be 36 degrees. Uh, for the next three days so not too much I can do outside no sign of any rain so the grass and the garden is kind of uh, static you can hear banging that's a nail gun someone's having a new roof put on the house do a little bit of thinking about the house and the garden last night I've got these uh, three or four trees here uh, the one on the left on the far left you can see that that's not actually in my garden but these three are now where the umbrella is, in the winter, this area is in deep shade. The sun's obviously lower. And this is quite a frosty area on a really cold morning. And I'm not sure these trees are actually doing anything for the garden, although the birds like them. Um, I've, got a, uh, I've got a dove sitting up there. You probably can't see him sitting up there looking at me right now. But yeah, I mean, it's nice to have that shade. Um, but I'm not quite sure they're doing me any favours being quite so tall. They're about 25 feet tall. Um, and behind them is an oak tree. Well, that's an oak tree. And that is about 80 feet, 90 feet high by the same width. So I don't really need an oak tree there. And there it is just, just sticking its head out on the right there. So really... Really, they all need to come right down. And yeah, I'm thinking yeah, they're, they're gonna be a problem. So it's just, I'm just something that I'm thinking about really. Um, I'm gonna get into this, trying to clear up the, uh, the orchard and the, the garden. The trees are just too tall. Those trees there are a boundary between me and my neighbor. And although he's got a couple of acres, his garden's a couple of acres, so he's not uh, right on the boundary. Um, and they're quite thin those trees but even those could do with coming down a little bit um, but I'm really going to need I'm really going to need a chipper and I've you know been doing some research into them and yeah even for a thousand pound the chippers are going to be quite light duty for something that I think I might need um, as I say I'm going to have to keep my eye out for something second hand I think so yeah around here this does need tidying up this here this tree that's fallen over is actually a pear tree it's still alive but it got hit by a frost earlier in the year and um, didn't get any fruit from it at all. And just behind it is the biggest euonymus I've ever seen. It must be, must be 10 feet tall um, that's sitting in front of that oak tree that I think needs to come down. So really all this area here, there's a beech tree there, uh, which is quite nice. And this is where the neighbor's chickens live. Uh, and I think it provides the chickens with some shade, but that's not actually in my garden, I don't think, is it? No, that's not in my garden anyway, so I quite like that. And that does give the chickens some shade. But yeah, this Euonymus has got a uh, bramble growing through it, and so has the oak tree. So yeah, that all needs quite a lot of attention. But again, need a chimmer. A chipper, chimmer, chipper. So what I think I might do I'm pretty keen on the idea actually, I've been thinking about it over the last few days. This area here, um, you see it is in a little bit of shade, about 11 o'clock. Uh, it's about, I don't know, about 50, 50 feet to the edge of the vegetable garden and about 90 or 100 feet long. This area here, I think this is going to be a new little orchard. Um, so I'm going to yeah, make some Make, make some plans, I think, to uh, put new trees in here. Not quite sure how many trees I'll get in here. Maybe six or eight. 
but yeah, if you've got any uh, any suggestions, any recommendations, uh, any tips, um, yeah, please put them down in the comments. I think I'm kind of going to abandon the uh, orchard uh, that I've got already, the ancient orchard, and I think that's probably going to be suitable for chickens. So, uh, yeah. So I've been thinking about this uh, flower bed situation, and I think I'm going to bring. I think I'm going to bring those three Wygela over and all these metal pots I think need to be painted a lighter colour, maybe a cream and um, put over here and bring that bed out I don't know, maybe another four or five feet um, so yeah, lots of ideas but again, can't do anything, it's not raining wouldn't expect it to rain it seems this part of the Charente in southwestern France uh, is extremely hot and dry in July and August um, so yeah I'm gonna have to wait I'm not quite sure when it will uh, when it cools down uh, a lot of people say don't do any planting until October so you have to be a bit patient when it comes to gardening so yeah got a few things to think about in the house as well so yeah found a few cracks popping up here and there uh, I um, I've just filled that one that's only a light one that I've cleaned out that's uh, just in the plaster but there is a crack obviously in that wall behind it I'll probably be able to see it from the workshop side but there's a crack that appeared in the bedroom and there's some other cracks that are starting to open up so the house is moving this last month or so it's been really really hot really really dry and the house is obviously moving you know the soil is drying out around the house and you know it's having a bit of a twitch and a move which um, it's a bit unnerving. I think uh, you'd freak out if it happened in, uh, like in the UK. If your house started moving and cracking, you'd probably have a you know a bit of a stress fit. But I think it's just it just happens here. You just have to sort of deal with it. I'm not stressed about it. As long as the house is still standing, that's the only thing that I'm worried about. So I've been thinking about this area around the sink. Uh, it's going to need uh, some kind of tiled splashback, I imagine. I guess I could. Um, I could carry it, carry it along around the top of the worktop. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do there. Uh, it sort of goes under the heading of decorating, really. Um, and uh, decorating is not on the list of things to do right now. I've got to get all the big stuff out of the way first. Uh, I'm trying to work out how big this unit should be. Been doing a few measurements, uh, but I am keen to get that um, cupboard sorted out in the corner actually you could just see there in the corner just see that crack see it's been repaired in the past and it's opened up opened up this past month so yeah the house is definitely on the move something i didn't think of and uh, everyone waited until the washing machine was in the cupboard <laughs> before they told me don't hang clothes above the washing machine because it'll be a damp situation well yeah, that is uh, quite a possibility. So I'm going to have to think about ventilation in there. Although it doesn't help. It doesn't help that I've got 37 t-shirts. No, literally, I have 37 t-shirts. And I only wear one. So, yeah, I'm probably going to have to change the way I'm uh, storing t-shirts. Maybe I don't really need them all hanging up. Seems I've not worn them for about five months. I know what I was going to say. I mentioned that Dan on the other channel, he's just the other side of Limoges, I think. Uh, he works at the Chateau. And uh, yeah, he sent me a little message. So someone out there, I can't believe he watches my daft channel. So someone out there has sent him a little message. So what's going on out there in, in the big white world? It's funny how the world works, isn't it? Anyway, uh, thanks to all those people that have um, donated a coffee to me. I uh, appreciate that enormously. Thank you so much. Uh, please like and subscribe and I'll see you soon.